All right, the Reds, it's the second look. Liverpool beat Red Star Belgrade 4-0 at Anfield. Could have been a lot, lot more. But we've got all the stats as well to say why Liverpool were great in this game and why we should all be happy. Quality of the opposition was obviously mentioned quite a lot in post-match analysis. But you've still got to beat them. And we want to see signs of progress, of improvement, of Liverpool clicking and all the rest of it. There was loads of that. Uh, I've got Rob Gutman and Mel Reddy with me today to have a chat. Um, and yeah, Neil's back as well today with his tactics, so you'd be pleased to hear that, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, Rob, statistically, the way they do this analysis about great chances that should be goals, Liverpool created eight of those, which I think is definitely the most this season yeah. uh, when we've been doing these shows. I mean, as I say, Red Star, not the, the greatest, but it's about Liverpool. We're here to talk about Liverpool. Liverpool were good on the night, weren't they? I think we were. It's hard to know what Red Star's level is. They're very good in their own league. They've, I mean, very, very good. They've won 11 out of 12. Their opening game of this, this year's Champions League, they hold Napoli in Belgrade. It's, it's just that result in PSG, 6-1, a couple of weeks or so ago, makes them look like they might be rubbish. Although there's an Evening Standard article casting aspersion on the whole integrity of that result, but we won't dwell on that. No, I'll leave that. I, I thought they looked like a sort of lower half Premier League table side. So not that dissimilar to Huddersfield. Not bad between the boxes, but in the boxes, they didn't seem to have any real threat uh, striker-wise, and they were prone to an error at the back. But I thought we were good. It took us a while to get going, mm. but, they, but that was always going to happen because they were going to work hard, close us down. But when we started to make chances, they really started coming. And I think what the stat doesn't show as well is there's a lot of chance before the chances we make as well. I mean, I'm thinking... Just after we score, Firmino just tries to flick Mane around the corner. He's very, very unlucky. If he gets him in, that's a goal. So there's a lot of that, which you wouldn't classify in the stats as a chance, but it's so nearly a big, big chance. I think Rob's right, isn't he, about that? They, they ramped it up because you can see that in the stats. I mean, overall, Liverpool had 65% possession, but second half alone, 70% in the second half. And they have 21 shots. 14 of those are in the second half, though. So it felt like it ramped up. Felt maybe Red Star went, we've got nothing to give back here. Although they did create two big chances of their own. Yeah, you know, when you speak about the, the quality of the opposition, I don't think they were as bad as, as people make out. I think oftentimes you can look at a, a scoreline and say, oh, well, they were crap. So mm. the opening 20 minutes, Red Star were actually very good. I, I think Liverpool only really sort of took control from around 18 minutes. Uh, before then, they were, they were very aggressive. They pressed quite well. They weren't giving Liverpool any sort of space or, or the opportunity to get comfortable. And, and Liverpool really had to wrestle the game and, and settle it down. Um, and when you talk about the quality of the opposition, the quality of the goals Liverpool scored in the game to actually make it the result that it was. You, you can't discount that as well. Uh, really great team moves. And if you if you minus the, the two penalty decisions that were quite soft, I think. Mm. Um, the other the other football that Liverpool played were really good and, the, and they would have torn apart much better teams as well with that kind of movement and invention. Absolutely. Well, let's do all the stats because we always do so. As I said, 65% possession for Liverpool, uh, 21 shots to Red Stars for 11 on target for Liverpool, none on target for the opposition. Um, what else have we got? Four corners for Liverpool, one for them. Uh, everything obviously pointing towards Liverpool being the better side. Eight big chances, as I mentioned, two only for Red Star. Uh, big chances missed. Well, I'm sure you can work that out. Liverpool missed five of them. Um, but the big thing everyone's talking about, Rob, is Fabinho. Um, he, mm. gets a, he gets his, his second star for Liverpool uh, after Chelsea in the League Cup. Obviously, there's been lots and lots of talk about is he good enough? Is he going to fit in? Liverpool has been doing that Liverpool thing where you get all those little rumours where you're not sure where they've come from, mm. how we can't play in a three and they, they've wasted the money and the, the this and the that. Although I did one in the summer about it was absolutely brilliant in training, so you don't know what to believe. Yeah. But, you know, yesterday, though, um, he's, he's caught... I mean, it's understandable in a way, though, I think. He's 43.7 million from Monaco. Mm. If he's only playing... It's two games as a start and three sub appearances where Liverpool have played 13 games. People are going to talk about it, but I think finally we can go. You can see something there now. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to know specifically what 
he wasn't quite getting. I mean, Jürgen's been very, yes, this is part of the process, this is natural, you saw with Andy Robbo and Oxley Chamberlain. But there's a, there's a few of us, Jürgen, we're not that soft. You, you drop Ginny Wijnaldum in day one, in his debut season, you drop Sadio in, you drop Salah in, no questions asked. So it's, it's not a given that they have to go through this apprenticeship yeah. kind of phase. Having said that, Maybe he considers, considers the, the position defensively a security position. You cannot have someone who's not going to get how we're going to move 10 yards forward, 10 yards back at some given mystery signal. Um, but the performance on the night by Fabinho was, I thought, impressive. He, he starts slowly. I think he, he gives the ball away a couple of times and you could see the crowd. He starts still going back as though he's playing centre-half. And yeah. then he moves further forward and seems to get into it more. Well, this was it, actually. I don't know if there was some sort of dis discussion between him and Ginny Wijnaldum. I mean, they start off, it's quite clearly a 4-2-3-1, which isn't our normal system, with the, the double number six, double pivot role, that they call it. But it, it, it evolved, I thought, during the, by about minute 20, and that's when we improve. He steps out, and you actually could see what he can bring you as a defensive midfield player. He can carry the ball out. He's very vertical in his passing. He supported the attack well. There was one occasion where he gives it. I just wanted him to crack one because I think you know he's got yeah. a decent shot on it. Um, I was excited by him. There's some really impressive stats, Mel. I see you uh, tweeting them last night as well. Um, there's various apps out there, of course, but whatever one you're on, they all say the same that. There was 24 duels contested by Fabinho, and he won 18 of them. Now, do you want to have a go at explaining for anyone watching what a duel is? I know, by the way, I've looked into it now, I've read it now, but do you want to have a go, or shall I? Okay, uh, I'm interested to see what <laughs> you've read about it. It's anything and everything, isn't it? So it's yeah. if you try to take them on, that's a duel. If you try to win an editor, that's a duel. If you try to win a tackle, that's yeah. a duel. Anytime just, you're engaged with yeah. an opponent. And if you emerge as the winner, yeah. you've won the duel. So 18 out of 24, he's won. I mean, that's I, a staggering number is, to, com to compete firstly and then to complete, to, to succeed. And it, it's, it's incredible. I, so far this season, we've hit numbers like you've seen. Uh, Joe Gomez, I think, last night contested 11 and 1, like 90%, which is also really, really good. But we usually you see 11, 14, sort of around like that mark to contest 24 was, was quite big. And then, like I said, to, to an 18. But I thought, like you guys have mentioned, he started quite slowly he got overrun a few times didn't really time stuff well but that was in the period where Liverpool hadn't really got any sort of grip on the game and the difference for me is I think Jenny Wijnaldum from minute one was outstanding yeah, he was he was my man of the match and I think I've lost count now of the amount of times I've said that this season but it really helps him to be part of that double pivot and then to be told I'm going to sit because Ginny did most of the sitting and, and allowed yeah. him to to break free. And when you have that sort of understanding and balance, it, it worked really well for Liverpool. He was very progressive in possession and I thought he he mixed it up well. He knew when he had to take the ball on. He knew when he had to give it first time. Uh, he looked forward quite a lot, which also helped the the environment Liverpool had created in this game where I think one of the reasons for the, for the big chances and stuff is that when you look at, at every time Liverpool created an opportunity, the amount of players we had in the box, which we haven't really mm. seen this season. And I think that was by virtue of the fact that, you know, you've got two protectors yeah. for your offensive play and the fact that our centre-backs, those two have shown the season that they're that they've been just a level above anything else. Um, so yeah, he was really good. Uh, I thought it was interesting that Jürgen pointed out that he, changed the system. That he played in his favorite system because I think he was suggesting that that's still, he still needs to get used to being the sole six. There's still things to work oh, on there. I didn't hear those. So, so the four-two-three-one was partly for Fabinho. It was for him, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can read that out. Klopp says he was good, he was very good, uh, it, but the present for his birthday was not that he was in the lineup, it was that we played his favorite system with a double six. 
he played really well and it was good to see he was very aggressive and everything was there for his first game for a while his second start from the beginning it was good really good it's quite impressive what people saw tonight it always helps a player if you play a good game it helped us tonight and helped him that was a start so let's carry on but as Mel says there's sort of like a bit of a underlying hint that you know maybe if you if you play in, in a three again He's, he's not there. I mean, I've seen someone commenting on the post-match pint saying, let's not forget about Milner and let's not forget about how well he's played. Mm. And the idea now, oh, well, that's it. Fabinho is going to play. And Jordan Henderson. Yeah, exactly. That guy. Um, I mean, but it was an impressive performance, nevertheless. And, and the big thing I liked, surprise, surprise, was that he put nine tackles in and he won seven of them. <laughs> Go on, lad. Uh, but anyway, Neil no, Atkinson. Twa- he won nine out of 12 tackles. Was it? Yeah. Well, it depends. which one. Most in the game. <laughs> Go on. Um, anyway, Neil is back from getting married and that, and he's got his tactics board, and here he is. There's been a lot of talk about Fabinho. They've just been doing it a minute or two ago. The manager mentioned it as well post-match. He said he played the double pivot as a present to Fabinho, making a joke out of it. I think he's being, as ever, the manager. He's under no obligation, to be honest. I think he's being slightly disingenuous there. What struck me watching it was, it was the same four in attack in a similar shape, theoretically, to the one that we had against Southampton. There it was Salah, Firmino, Shaqiri and Mane. They lined up a bit like that. For, I think Shaqiri, I think Mane and uh, Firmino might have, might have moved around a little bit, but that was how they lined up that day with Shaqiri in this little role here. And then he got took off at half-time. Yesterday, he goes with Firmino there and Shaqiri quite clearly detailed out there. Yes, with licence in the same way that everyone in the Jurgen Klopp team has licence to move around and do little bits and pieces. But it does seem as though he's gone for that 4-2-3-1 with that in mind, the idea that this is going to be how he gets Shaqiri on the pitch with these other footballers. But I think there's even more to it again. That helps Sturridge. It's clear for Sturridge there if it's going to be this sort of shape, whether or not he plays there or there, he can go either side. He comes on for Firmino as the game wears on. You can argue it helps Lallana, who could sit into any of these three here. And it might even help his midfield options. Yes, it helps Fabinho, but it can also help Wijnaldum. It can help Henderson and it can help Milner. My point about this is that we know what Liverpool's first eleven looks like. It'll be the shape and the side that we realistically get at Arsenal when it is the 4-3-3, when they all come like that and they hunt you hunt you like a pack of dogs, to use Guardiola's uh, phraseology around it, when Klopp unleashes his runners on you. That's what we'll get against Arsenal. But in this other, these other games, in this little run that we're now currently on, arguably from now until Christmas, we play a lot of the poorer sides. And we don't just play a lot of the poorer sides, but we'll want to rotate. And I suspect Jurgen Klopp has decided that his way home in terms of rotation could well be something with that double pivot in, something that we saw last night. And that may well be what we see a lot of between now and Christmas, before we come out the other side of that run, can take a breath and get psyched for the second half of the season. Nice one to Neil, good to have him back, isn't it? Nice to see Akko there with his tactics board. Feels, feels right, doesn't it? Feels, feels like we're all back home. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about then is Shaqiri. Um, yes, Gareth, Shaqiri. Shaqiri, he's good, isn't he? Um, I mean, look, lots of, lots of, we, have, we had loads of debates, didn't we? Me, you, Neil, over the summer. Neil. about you know Neil in particular wasn't banging to the he's idea. He's a convert now, though, you know. He appears to be. He appears to be a convert. I, 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 I read his report on the site. Um, but yeah, He's another one where, you know, £13 million from Stoke and what he's had so far, four starts, Southampton, Chelsea in the League Cup, Huddersfield and Red Star. Uh, Four times he's come on as a sub, West Ham, Leicester, PSG and Chelsea. Uh, Obviously hooked against Southampton, which is a big talking point Mm. as well. And there was a kind of a similar thing, similar, but, you know, almost not as extreme as the Fabinho thing, but a bit of a thing about how are we using him and how is he going to fit in and all that. But for me, every time we've seen him, he's so bright, he's so energetic. You know, he was he was great again at last night. I thought he, he's he's always in and around the goals. He might be he's not yeah. always the assist, but he's might be the pass before. Really clever with his passing, the weight of his passing as well. You impressed, Rob? I presume. Yeah, and you know the interesting thing I was one of the things thrown at me by Neil and not harping on about it. He used the phrase, and I think other people have said this about Shakir, he's a match of the day player. Mm. Which I think when people have that in their mind, is they imagine the Shakiri you do sometimes see, especially for Switzerland, where he'll shift it and just boot it from yeah. distance. And he's not actually bad at that. But what I'm noticing is he's, a, he's contributing. So if you watch highlights of Liverpool this season, you will see a lot of Shakiri. I mean, even <clears throat> Chelsea, he nearly scores when he, he makes a run. Every Against Huddersfield, he makes the pass for a, a Salah. He's hugely involved in the crucial second goal last night. He's all, he, I mean, against Southampton, when he starts, he's involved in two goal, two or three goals, I think. Um, <clears throat> he contributes. And that's outside of the fact that the, the boy's got work rate. Mm. 
And I don't think any yeah. of us really expected to see that. He's come. I don't know whether he's a different player or he's just had a big word with himself, but his work rate is, is, is phenomenal and his attitude's fantastic. He's taken being a bit part player really, really well. You can see now how Klopp might want to integrate him more as a starter. Okay, not in a 4-2-3-1 so much where he nominally took Salah's wide right berth, but in a 4-3-3 he can play the, the Coutinho midfield role, the, 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 the role intended for Nabil Fakir. With a you know alongside say a Ginny Wijnaldum and a Jordan Henderson or a Jordan Henderson and a Naby Keita, you could see him put in to become that fourth attacking force. Personally, I'm, I'm excited by him. I hope we see him start against Cardiff. He comes off to a standing ovation last night. That was that big really, hug as well off Klopp. Big yeah. hug from Jurgen. Uh, that was good to see, and I'd like to see him being given a chance to go again. Well, I'm, I'm worried now that you're going to contradict my stats again, Mel. But uh, <laughs> the ones I've got uh, one assist, three key passes and two big chances created by Shakiri. And there is this bit of a myth about the shooting thing. I think that everyone thought that when he first came, he's just this fella who hit shots from all over the show. He only has one last night. And there was, there was opportunity, I thought, a few times where he could have hit one from yeah. distance. Feels like he's making sure. And I think both with him and Fabinho, it felt like last night, you could do that thing where you go, oh, these opposition aren't the best and we're going to win. But both of them looked absolutely determined to impress because they've got that chance to yeah. impress. We spoke about him a lot in the summer. Quite, like yeah. very fun yeah. uh, conversations because there were so many different different voices and opinions. But Liverpool's scouting department don't just dine on, on what he did at Stoke. They will have gone through and looked at his entire history and seen what he can offer because often you'll end up at a team and what you do for Stoke and what you do for Liverpool and what you would have done for Bayern Munich or, or required to do for all those teams are different. And he had to be individualistic at Stoke because they didn't have the requisite qua quality for him to be collaborative. He mm. had to make things happen on his own and be their match winner. And yeah. so that's what he did. Um, and when you speak to people at the club that, are, that have worked with him and, and actually people that worked with him at, at Bayern as well, he's always wanted to play. He, he's not wanted to be that sole match winner. He's, he's got so much more to him that he's always wanted to show that. But he didn't really have the opportunity there. And you can see it now. I mean, there's, there's early on in, in the first half, he gets the ball and immediately... He punts it forward because he knows instinctively that he's going to have Salah and Sadio running onto it. And it's just that that quickness of mind to little, know. There was, a, there was a bit of a groan at that ball, though, wasn't it, when he hit that? Because it, it was quite high, wasn't it? And everyone, yeah. he's just like launched it. But actually, it was quite clever because, yeah. as you say, he knew they were going to latch onto it. And they did latch onto it. Yeah. And it did turn into a chance. Exactly, but, uh, yeah. but I think a lot of people watching us went, oh, he's just launched it there. He, but he meant to launch it. He you know wants I mean? to force things. I, yeah. I love that band. He's like, um, I don't want to look like poor man's Luis Suarez, but he has that, that same approach that Suarez has, which is get the ball, everything has to happen super, super quickly for him. Yeah. He turns, pings it, go, does he's not... There's concerned. an urgency about Yeah, that. And, he, and he's not, and I think this is what Klopp's football is all about. I think that heavy metal football is all about, though I think the missing link from this side is Luis Suarez, actually. That's, and Steven Gerrard, in a way, players who just want to force it, just want it to happen very quickly, and are brave enough on the ball to risk losing it. I think that's what you've got to, because if you, that's how you get behind teams who know you're better than them, who can put blocks in front of you, is to play at tempo, you've got to turn teams quickly, and that means being brave. Yeah, absolutely. He, he has the desire to want to affect the game in a very positive way, mm. and beyond the desire, he has the confidence and, and the skill set to be able to do it. I think, you know, you spoke, Robbo, about, you know, gradually introducing him, and, and part of that is... He needs to learn what his teammates want from him. And you can see every single game that he comes on in or he started yesterday. And you can now see, like I mentioned with that example, he knows where Salah and Mana are going to be all the time. Mm. And in his build-up to the goal, he sends that channel ball perfectly weighted yeah. for Andy Robertson after, by the way, counter-pressing and, and winning the ball yeah. back. Um, and... Even that, like he's still, he's following the move. He, he knows where he needs to be in relation to them. Pass goes in. Um, Roberto Firmino scores great. The touch for the second goal for, for Mohamed Salah's mm. goal is, is remarkable because 
he gets it at speed and he, he knows he knows where Salah is he knows what he needs exactly what he needs to do yeah. to create that chance and he makes it happen and I, I think what's so good about this Liverpool team he is versatile he can he can perform so many functions in this team but then you go through it and you think Ginny Wijnaldum as well we've seen him play six eight he can be a ten Sadio Mane can be a ten Daniel Sturridge comes on mm. and can play as a ten and yeah. and does the things that a playmaker will do but all these players can contribute in so many different ways and that gives Klopp a flexibility and a depth in terms of options, but also quality that that he hasn't been with. Yeah, absolutely. And it feels like two more players now have settled and are ready to contribute and ready to you know keep their heads on the march, basically. So watch out. Warnock, uh, I've already ripped you on the post-match pint, so I won't call your names again. But hopefully you get beat about five or six on Saturday, <laughs> mate. Uh, there will be a preview show, so look out for that as well. We'll get into it a bit more detail than me just calling Warnock names. <laughs> um, that has been the second look. Thanks to Mel and Rob. Thanks to Sam for filming. Up the reds.